Because guess what? Today we're talking about hearing. Uh, we're talking about your ability to hear God. We're talking about uh, God speaking to you. We're talking about uh, how well you can hear it. We're going to talk about do you need spiritual hearing aids? Uh, so, some people might just need hearing aids altogether. Uh, but uh, we're going to talk about, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to let your wives and your husbands talk to each other about that. We're going to talk about spiritual hearing aids this morning. Uh, and what the Bible says about hearing God and how we tell if we can hear God or not. Uh, how we can tell if, it's, if it is God. How some of us hear God and just don't pay him any attention. How some of us uh, ignore God. How some of us uh, listen to God for a little bit. And then we uh, just shut him out and we ignore what he says and we forget what he says. Uh, so today I'm going to start off in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3. Uh, and I have to thank uh, Chris Sharp for uh, sparking the message uh, in me this week. Uh, as he was talking last week at our uh, at our Crosswalk 101, he uh he mentioned this scripture, and when he mentioned this scripture, it just clicked in my head, you know, uh, that that was what God wanted me to speak on this morning, about hearing God. Uh, so, 1 Samuel chapter 3, uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. It says, uh, Now the boy Samuel ministered uh, to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation, and it came to pass at, at that time while Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow dim, uh, grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, uh, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call uh lie down again, and he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call my, call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived, perceived that the Lord called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went to lay down in his, uh, went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at, uh, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak. For your servant hears. So what's going on here is the Lord is speaking to Samuel. And it says that Samuel did not know the Lord, nor did he know whenever know the word of the Lord. So he didn't know when it, how to understand when God was speaking to him. Uh, and he thinks that Eli, who is basically the one training him, his teacher, he thinks that he is the one that is calling him. So he's sleeping, or he's laying down about to go to sleep, and he hears somebody say, Samuel, so he gets up, and I mean, just think about how, how y'all are when somebody wakes you up, you're just like, you go in the other room, and you're like, yeah, what you want, so uh, you got to think, uh, Samuel's still a kid at this point, uh, and so he goes, and he runs to Eli, and he asks Eli, he says, yes, what do you, what do you, what do you want, and uh, of course, he probably had a lot better manners than that, and didn't say it that way, but he goes and he asks him uh, what he wants, and Eli says, I didn't call you. And so he said, go, go lay back down. How many of y'all have your kids wake you up, and you're just like, go lay back down? Um, so he goes and lays back down. Well, then he hears it again. He hears somebody say, Samuel. So Samuel gets up and goes to Eli again and says, yes, you called me. And he says, no, I didn't. Go lay back down. So he goes and lays back down again. So he's sitting there, and... Uh, he's laying there, and he hears it again, Samuel. So he jumps up, and he runs in there, and he says, You did call me this time. He said, I know you called me. What What do you want? And uh, Eli said, I did not call you. And that by this point, Eli realized that 
that it was not him that was calling him, but God that was calling him. The Lord was trying to speak to him. So he told, he, he told Samuel, he says, go back, lay back down, and if you hear it again, say, your, uh, yes, Lord, uh, speak for your servant hears. So that's what Samuel went and did. He went and lay back down, and he heard it again. Samuel, Samuel. And he said, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. And so many of us are that way. So many of us, we, we hear somebody calling our names. We, we hear something. We hear something in our lives. We hear a voice in the back of our head saying that we need to make certain decisions. We hear a voice in the back of our head saying we need to do this, we need to do that. Uh, but we don't really know what it is. Have you ever been in Walmart? I will say Walmart because everybody goes to Walmart. You, you, you ever been in Walmart and you, you could have swore somebody said your name? And you start looking around, and, and then, or with me, I'm with Claudia, and I, I swear somebody hears my na- says my name, which is rare because nobody has my name. Uh, most of the time, if somebody has my name, it's Elijah or Eli or something. Most of the time, it's, nobody has the name Elisha. So, but for some reason, I still think people say my name. So I'll turn around, and I'll look at Claudia, I'll be like, yeah, what you want? And she's like, I didn't say nothing. I'm like, yeah, yes, you did. What, what do you want? And she's like, I really didn't say nothing. And I look around, make sure there's nobody else around that knows me. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So we just keep going. But And, and that's what a lot of times it happens with God, is a lot of times we hear something. We hear something calling to us. We hear something trying to speak to us. But we don't know where it's coming from. Uh, we hear a little voice in the back of our heads telling us to do certain things, telling us to make certain decisions, but we, we can't interpret it. We can't uh, understand it because we don't know where it's coming from. Uh, let's see. I need a volunteer. Uh, Ty, you want to help me out? You want to help me out? You don't have to. You don't want to? All right. How about you, Robert Ellis? Can you help me out? All right. So, so I'm going to give you a... Robert, here is a list of phrases I want you to say. And each I'm going to move you to different positions and I want you to say these I'm going to tell you how to say these words, how to say this phrase. And uh, I want you to say it and I'm going to see how well everybody can hear. All right. So first off, uh, that's your first phrase. And then what I want you to do is I want you to go stand at the very back and uh, take that with you. Uh, and I want you to to whisper that phrase, all right, and I'm going to keep talking, and then uh, whenever I point at you, uh, I want you to say that phrase, but I'm going to keep talking, because guess what, in life, things don't get quiet whenever God's trying to speak, so there's still noise going around in your life, and there's still things going on in your life, but God's still trying to speak to you and trying to get through to you, so you have to be able to hear him regardless, so I'm going to point to him right about now, and he's going to whisper that phrase, and how many of y'all are going to hear what he's trying to say to you? Robert Ellis, Robert Ellis, you're God today. Sorry. Uh, um, so he's trying to whisper to you. He's trying to whisper to you. Uh, how many of y'all heard what he said? Anybody? All right. Well, just, just to give y'all the benefit of the doubt, I'm going to point to him here in a second. I'm going to point to him again. And he's going to whisper it just a little bit louder and see if anybody hears him then. All right. So what about now? Can y'all hear him? Anything? Anything? Anybody? You know what he said? Or can you just hear him mumble? Yeah, you just heard something. All right. Uh, what? Ain't that funny about how, how you just hear him mumble? You ever been sitting in church or you've been making a decision in your life and you just you get, you get this weird feeling in your gut and you don't know quite what it is? You're, you're trying to debate. You're... It's for, with me, I'm always trying to debate. I'm always trying to debate, is that God trying to tell me I need to do this? Or is that God trying to tell me I don't need to do this? Am I having this weird feeling in my gut because it's a bad decision? Or am I having this weird feeling in my gut because it's a good decision and I'm excited or what? Um, so a lot of times, that's, that's kind of like what it is. It's kind of like a mumble. We're, it's mumbled, and then we got to try to figure out what it is. Uh, and sometimes... We don't really try that hard to figure out what it is. We don't really try that hard to try to figure out what God's saying. And so God then has to try to, to, to speak a little bit louder to us. So here in a second, I'm going to point to uh, 
Robert again. He's going to say that same phrase again. And he's going to say it just a little bit louder. And we're going to see if anybody can hear. All right, so go ahead, Robert. He's going to talk. Anybody? What, what was it? God's not dead. All right. So, so sometimes if we, if we keep listening and we keep trying to hear what God's saying, God will make it more clear to us. But see, if, if, we just, if he tries to speak to us, we, we feel something. We feel God trying to move us in a certain direction. If we just feel that and we don't really pursue it, we'll never understand what he was trying to say. We'll never understand what he was trying to get across to us. And uh, so if we continue to just pursue, the message will get clearer and clearer the more we try to hear what God is saying. Um, so that's a lot of times what he's trying to do in church or, uh, or before we even receive our salvation. is He's, just, he's, he's trying to whisper to you, trying to whisper you to tell, go, go, follow me, make that decision. Go after me. Come to me. Come on. I want you. I love you. I sent my son to die for you. Come on. Make this decision. Get up out of your seat. Swallow your pride. Come on. And he's trying to say those things, and we're not really listening to him. And if we, if we eventually make that decision, if we eventually pursue him, then that decision really becomes, uh, or that mumble becomes more clear that, hey, I, I need to get up. I need to get up. But, but if we're turned off and we're shut down when we don't want to let God in, it just remains a mumble, and you just, you just keep fidgeting in your seat. You're like, uh, when's this altar call going to be over with? Uh, and so, th- so that's a different, uh, there's, that's how what God's trying to do. He's trying to whisper to you. You just have to hear. And if you, if you can't hear, keep trying to figure it out. See, what, what Samuel could have done here, one thing Samuel could have done is Samuel, after the second time, I mean, because it happened four times, after the second time, he could have just been like, I'm going to sleep. Forget it. If he wants something, he can come get me. Um, so, And that's exactly what Samuel could have done. But no, Samuel kept hearing something, so he kept trying to figure out what it was. And he kept going to Eli, even though Eli kept telling him it wasn't him. Um, so then after we let, make that relationship with God, after Samuel made that relationship with God, I'm, I'm not going to read it all because I'd be reading chapters and chapters in the Bible, and I think y'all are probably hungry like I am and ready for lunch. Uh, but basically what happens is after Samuel hears God that first time, he starts hearing him more clearly. It says that he did not yet know God or know his voice. So after this moment, he began to hear God more clearly and become one of the prophets. And basically, what ends up happening is Samuel is uh, one of the prophets that anoints uh, two of the biggest kings of Israel, Saul and David. And, uh, and before, before Saul was ever anointed king, the prophet was almost uh, counted as a king among the people, uh, even though he wasn't a king. and But the, uh, it says in Scripture that uh, your son, it, 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 that people tell him that it says your sons uh, aren't good, so appoint us a king. They, they're asking Samuel to anoint and appoint a king so that they, so that the king can judge them when he's gone. So basically, they want a king to replace Samuel when he's gone. So that tells me that they kind of look at these prophets. They look at the prophet almost as a king, because that's why they want. That's what that was the reasoning for wanting a king was so that they somebody could judge them after Samuel was gone. Well, see, after you make that re- the decision to pursue God and have a relationship with God. You begin to hear him a little bit more clearly, and you begin to, and the more, the closer you get to God, the more audible his voice is, and the more clear his voice is, and the more you can understand, and making decisions in life, now understand me, I'm not saying every decision in life becomes easy, but understanding what God wants you to do becomes a little bit easier. Uh, of course, there's still times where you're scratching your head, and you're like, God, what do you want me to do? Uh, so Robert, if you could come up here real quick, uh, Then, if you get to face the crowd, 
and I just want you to, to talk normal and say that next, yes, that next line. And uh, this is kind of how the conversation becomes after you've, you've made that relationship with him and after you've pursued him and you continue pursuing him. So go ahead and say that next line. Everybody heard that pretty clear, right? Did anybody not hear it? All right, so, so that's how your relationship with God becomes after you pursue, or how the, your hearing of God comes after you pursue him. But here's, here's the issue. Here's the problem. That's how it becomes if you continue to pursue him. But if you don't pursue him, if you don't seek a relationship with him, if you don't continually go after him, the hearing of God isn't as direct. So, uh, Robert, if you could face the wall for me, please. And uh, what he's going to do, uh, in here in a second when I tell him to, he's going to not not quite whisper it, uh, but he's going to talk in this direction, away from any of y'all's ears, and he's going to say something pretty soft, pretty quiet, not not not... Not as loud as the last whisper back there, but not as quiet as the first one either. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Uh, so, so he's going to say it, and uh, we're going to see, and this is going to be that third line, we're going to see how well you can hear, uh, hear Robert. So, but, and like I said, I'm going to continue talking because life doesn't stop when God's trying to talk to you. Things are still going on. Uh, so go ahead, Robert, and then I'm going to keep talking, and we're going to see what happens and see how well y'all can hear him. Uh, did anybody hear him? All right. Uh, just to give y'all the benefit of the doubt, we're even going to bump it up a little bit. So this time, Robert, I'm going to keep doing it and just say it a little bit louder. So go ahead, Robert, and I'm going to keep going. Anybody? You think you know what he said? Is that what I wrote? I don't even know how to write. <laughs> that is right. So, so was, was she the only one that heard it, or did y'all hear it? Did y'all? Did you hear it? Anybody? One person heard it. All right. All right. Uh, so, a lot of times this is this is the next stage in life that we get to. A lot of times this is the next point in life that we get to. Uh, Robert, if you don't mind, if you could just have a seat for me, because I'm still gonna need you again for that last one. But it might be, I don't want you to just have to keep standing here. Yes. Uh, I don't want them to start throwing stuff at you whenever they're aiming for me. Uh, so a lot of times this is the next stage in, in our relationship with God is we, we hear him whisper in our ear. We seek after that. Or we make that decision to follow him. We make that decision to have a relationship with him. And there for a little while we hear his voice. We hear his voice. Uh, we, we, we can kind of understand what he wants us to do in life and the decisions that he's uh, telling us to make. We can hear the Holy Spirit telling us to do things or not to do things. And we can hear it pretty clearly. Uh, we, we just and It's not an actual voice, but we kind of get that feeling in our gut. Uh, but then what a lot of us do is Robert was actually the one that turned around, but a lot of us turn our back on God. We turn our back on God. And guess what? If the if the sound waves aren't coming in your direction, if they ain't, if they're not coming to your ears, then guess what? It makes it harder to hear. Now, realistically, Robert spoke in this direction, and realistically, the sound waves bounce off that wall and come back this way. But they lose a lot of volume going having to bounce off that and come back this way. So it becomes a lot harder to hear God speaking when we turn our backs on him. Because when we turn our backs on him, when we forget about God, when we begin to do things our own way again and stop pursuing him, it becomes harder to hear. Because not only that, but we can't see his lips. Did you know uh, that seeing somebody's lips move can help you understand what they're saying a lot? Unless you're just absolutely the world's worst person to read the lips and you think they're saying things that they aren't saying and then you go tell your friends and then that's how gossip gets started. Uh, but it's a lot easier to understand somebody when you can see their lips. 
Guess what? When you turn your back on God, you can't see his lips anymore. You can't, you, it begins to get harder and harder to understand him when we turn our backs on him. So, and a lot of times, this is what the next step is in life, is after we have that relationship with him, we begin to understand him and pursue him. Then when we get to a certain point and everything gets good in our lives, we turn our backs on him and start doing our own thing again. The question I present to you this morning is, do you need spiritual hearing aids? But I guess the question I should ask is, should you need spiritual hearing aids? See, a lot of us need spiritual hearing aids because we aren't pursuing that relationship with God, so it's hard to hear Him. So a lot of us need spiritual hearing aids because we can't hear God, but we shouldn't need them. We shouldn't need hearing aids because we should be pursuing a relationship with God, having a deeper relationship with God to the point where we can hear him clearly. We can understand what decisions he make, wants us to make in life clearly. I was, uh, when I was studying for this, I kept thinking about you know people in the Bible that, that heard God and uh, just made certain decisions off of hearing, hearing God. Uh, whether they listened to him or they didn't listen to him. And uh, the best thing I could think about was somebody that heard God face to face. And we only know a couple, we only know so many people in the Bible that talk to God face to face. Uh, so basically, I resulted back to Genesis, Adam and Eve. And in Genesis, Chapter 3, verse 4, uh, this is after Adam and Eve had spoke with God, and God had given them instructions for the garden, what to eat, what not to eat, and uh, just told them everything. They gave, he, he told them uh, to stay away uh, from one tree in the garden. And this is after the serpent uh, comes up to her. It says, uh, Then the serpent said to the woman, uh, you then, or you will not surely die. Eve tells the serpent that they will die if they eat from the tree. She tells him that, and he says, "You will surely not die." And like all of y'all know, how this how it ends is Eve ends up eating from the tree. She ends up eating the fruit. See, the problem is a lot of us do this in life. We do exactly like Eve. We hear God's voice. We have communication with God. But then we completely ignore what God says. What good is a relationship with God if we ignore what he says? Do you know what happened to Adam and Eve after all this? After uh, they ate from the tree? They stopped walking with God. They didn't have that one-on-one -on -one communication with God anymore because they threw it all away by ignoring what God said. See, the more you ignore what God is trying to say to you, you can have a relationship with Him. You can understand Him. You can hear Him. But the more that you ignore what he says, the harder it's going to be for you to hear him because the further away from him you're going to get. If you notice, the person that heard what Robert said last was one of the closest people to him. So the further you get away from him, the more you ignore him, the harder it is going to be for you to hear him. It also, uh, The Bible says in John chapter 10, or sorry, chapter 8, verse 47, it says, Whoever is of God hears the word of God. The reason you do not hear them is that you are not of God. And it says in John chapter 10, verse 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The Bible is clear that if you are of God and if you have a relationship with God... 
you should be able to hear him. And if you can't hear him, Scripture says, then you are not of him. So my question this morning is that you, that you need to ask yourself is first off, the question I asked you is, do you need spiritual hearing aids? If you need spirit, if the answer is yes, I need spiritual hearing aids, you need to ask yourself, do I really have a relationship with God? If I can't hear God, then do I really have a relationship with him? Or am I just going through the motions? Or did I just accept the title? Did you know most Americans that you approach, most people in the U.S. that you go up to and you ask them if they're a Christian, most of them will tell you yes. Most of them probably haven't set foot in a church in years. Or most of them might only go to church on Easter, Easter and Christmas. But most people that you approach will claim to be a Christian. So if you're not hearing God, are you one of them? Or are you just not listening hard enough? So I say all that to say this this morning. Samuel kept hearing God try to speak to him. And when he finally figured out that it was God, whenever you finally figure out that it's God, when you're sitting in the seat right before the altar call or while the pastor's preaching or while you're sitting in the car, guess what? You do not have to get saved in a church building. You do not have to get saved listening to a pastor. You can get saved in the most random of places. You can have a relationship with God in the most random of places. He can speak to you in the most random of places. So... Whenever he speaks to you and you finally figure out, oh, it's God. When you're like Samuel and you finally figure out, oh, it's God. And you, you hear, start, hear his voice and you make that decision to have a relationship with him. When you finally do that, then you can start communicating with him. You can start to pursue him like Samuel did. Continue to pursue him. Continue to have a relationship with him to where you can hear his voice more clearly. You can be like Samuel and pursue him. Or you can ignore him. You can ignore the things that he has to say to you. You can pursue that relationship with him. Know what he's saying, but do the opposite of what he's saying. To the point to where you don't hear him anymore. To the point to the only time you're talking to him is when something really bad's happening. So I'm going to ask everybody to stand up this morning. And uh, if everybody could just bow your head and close, close your eyes. If you're in this place this morning, you can say that I struggle hearing God. I struggle with listening to God. That, that I, I rarely know what decision He really wants me to make. If that's you today in this place, if you could just slip up your hand. I'm not going to make you come up front. I just want to know who struggles to understand what God wants you to do. Guess what? That does not mean that you are some horrible person. What that means is that you recognize it and you want to make a difference. That means that you have an opportunity. You see, if you, if you don't recognize that you're not hearing them, if you don't realize that you're not hearing them, nothing can ever change. So I'm going to say today, if you're in this place and... You hear God, but a lot of time, but you tend to ignore what He's saying. If you could just slip up your hand. And lastly, if you're in this place today and you can say, I've heard a whisper, I've heard God whispering to me just like He was. 
He is speaking to Samuel. He's been calling my name. He's been calling my name, and I've been trying to figure out what it was. I've, I've been feeling this pit in my stomach. I've been trying to figure out what this feeling is, and I figured it out today. And I fr- finally heard God today. I finally heard God say, I want a relationship with you today. If that's you, and you can say, I finally heard God today, and I want to have a relationship with you, with him, if you could slip up your hand. All right, thank you. I want to pray for each and every person in this place. Because guess what? Sometimes sometimes we, we hear God. Sometimes we have a good relationship with God. But things start going on in our lives, and it just becomes a little bit more cloudy. The, the voices that are around me get louder and louder and louder. And it's not that I don't hear God, but it just takes me a little while to get to figure it out. So... I'm going to pray for those that decided to make a relationship with God today. I'm going to pray for those that struggle to hear God. I'm going to pray for those that ignore God. And then I'm going to pray for everybody. I'm going to pray that everybody will be able to find a quiet place, a secret place where we can get away. And listen to God. Get away from all the troubles of this world. Get away from all the problems of this world. And just listen to God. So that we can do the things like Samuel did. So that we can minister to the people like Samuel did. God used Samuel to anoint two of the kings of Israel. One of which was David. Who is referred to as being a man after God's own heart. If we understand God, if we can get away from these things of this world and understand God and talk to God, He can do so much in you. You could raise up one of the next greatest preachers. You can help minister to one of the next greatest preachers. You can help minister to one of the next biggest missionaries or the biggest minister they don't have to be a pastor or a missionary evangelist they can just be somebody that goes out every single day and is able to spread the love of Christ you could be a part of that if you if we can just listen to him if we can get away from the things of this world get to a quiet place so I'm going to pray that everybody in this place will be able to find their quiet place So, dear Lord, I just thank you so much for everything that you do for us. Thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to listen to you, to hear your voice, to seek a deeper relationship with you. Lord God, for those of you that are just, for those in this place that are just hearing you today, that are just figuring out your voice and figuring out that they need to have a relationship with you, to figure out that you're pursuing them, and now it's time for them to pursue you. For those that are in this place today, I just ask that you forgive them of their sins, Lord God, that you save them, that you cleanse them of all the, the trash of this world, all the problems of this world, Lord God, and that you just fill them with your Holy Spirit and that they can pursue you and hear your voice from here on out. For those that are in this place that struggle to hear you, Lord God, for those that struggle to hear your voice and to hear what they need to do, I just ask that you speak to them, that you you you. Raise your voice just a little bit louder so that they can know what they need to do, do, so that they can know what they need to do with their lives to, to be able to hear you more, to be able to understand your voice more, to be able to understand what they need to do in their lives more. For those, for those that are in this place today that tend to ignore you, Lord God, I ask, I ask that you give them the motivation to realize that If they ignore you too much, Lord God, eventually they'll quit hearing you. Eventually they won't be able to hear your voice, and eventually they'll get to a place where there's no relationship at all. And now I ask that you be with everybody in this place, including myself, that you allow us to get to a quiet place. God, that you give us, show us how to get to a quiet place, a secret place where we can just talk to you, Lord God, so that we can understand what you're saying, that we can get away from the problems of this world, whether financial problems, job problems, family problems. 
kids screaming around the house problems. Lord God, whatever it is, that you just show us how to get to a quiet place. Show us how to get to a place where we can communicate with you and talk to you. Oh God, we just love you so much. And I just ask that your Holy Spirit pour into each and every one of the people in this place. We need you. Lord God, we love you and we praise you for everything that you do. In your name we pray. Amen.